What's up everybody and welcome to part two of my little mini series here basically taking you from start to finish of one of my paintings. So last week we talked about how I cut and prepped a panel uh, for the painting and this week we're going to start talking about transferring the image and making the underpainting. So we're talking transferring the image because we're not actually going to take the time to draw out the full image. Um, basically what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a printout of the image scaled to the size that I want and I'm gonna be transferring that to the panel with some graphite transfer paper. Now the reason that we're doing that and before everybody gets all huffy about using uh, basically a traced image um, this really is only making the steps go a little bit faster for me. Um, a lot of people might think that it's a whole like cheating or something. It's not. It's really not. We can go into the full history of artists using camera lucidas and camera obscuras and all sorts of different ways that they would basically trace out their image so that they could get right into the nitty gritty. But that's gonna take some extra time and you're just gonna have to just kind of, kind of go with me. So the transferring of the image really for me is just to save me some time. Yes, I could go through and I could draw it all out and it would look just like what it's going to here in a second, but you'll be able to see how fast this goes and why I do it this way. So what you're gonna need is basically your primed panel, a photograph, printed out, scaled to the size that you want. Um, this one, since I'm doing just a small piece uh, actually fits on a normal eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. So I actually just pulled this into Word and scaled it to the size that I want and trimmed it out to fit onto the panel. Uh, if I'm working on a larger painting that's say like, I don't know, like 24 by 36 or something, I'm gonna actually send that out to a company, you know, to like, American frame or somebody who is going to be able to actually do a large scale print. Um, and that way I also have a good reference image in hand too. This kind of stuff, um, it's, it's just a kind of a crappy little print. So I throw these away and it's, you know, it's not a whole lot of money down the drain. So you'll need that. You'll need your panel. You also need some sort of little stylus. Uh, these are really cool. Um, they're kind of double-sided to give you different tip sizes. Uh, you can get them basically at any craft store, art supply store, um, and it's basically just a little round bit on uh, like a pencil handle. Um, you could also just use a pen, um, but I got in the habit of using these because if I'm paying like 35 bucks or something for a large scale print of the image. I don't want a bunch of pen marks all over it. And this way I'm able to transfer the image and follow along all the little lines that I need uh, without marking up the image too. You also need a sheet of uh, graphite transfer paper uh, cut to the scale of your painting. Uh, these are you know, you can find these on Amazon. You can find these at Hobby Lobby. Um, they come in all sorts of different colors too. So if you don't want it to transfer black, you can get it in white, you can get it in red, you can get it in blue, um, all sorts of different stuff. Um, and you'll also need a little bit of like some blue painter's tape. So all we're gonna do is take our graphite transfer paper, you're gonna notice that there's a dark side and a light side. The dark side is obviously the side that has the graphite on it. So we're going to put that down, face down onto the panel, making sure that the light side is up. And then we're gonna take some of this blue painter's tape and we're gonna attach it to the panel in places where I don't plan on uh, 
where I don't plan on marking and transferring any part of the image. And then we'll just do like one off to the side because that's not going to be touching an arm. And that'll probably do. And then we just place our image wherever we want it on the picture or on the uh, on the panel. I think right about there is gonna be good. And same deal. Just go through and tape it down where you're not going to be, where you're not gonna be transferring that image. And then basically, I'm gonna just go through and transfer this out following all the little lines, all the places of detail where I think I'm going to uh, need to know where things are. All right, cool. So you can see that it's really just giving me the base outline of everything that um, different facial features and ears and all that kind of stuff. The rest of it is going to get drawn in and uh, done up with color in the painting process. So uh, let's go back to the studio. All right, so before we get into the actual underpainting stage, I wanted to show you an example of why I go and do a charcoal study before I get into the actual painting process. So here is the charcoal study for the painting that I just, that I'm getting started on. And you can notice that there's going to be a little bit of a difference in the scale. Um, so in addition to helping me figure out some of the issues that I might have with the form and getting basically that muscle memory uh, in place so that I can start attacking the actual color instead of messing around with getting the form right. I've already got that all figured out. So I can bring what I've learned from that drawing into the actual painting process. Uh, in addition to that, I'm able to mess around with scale a little bit. In the, in the drawing, I had started it out and it's not exactly the size that I wanted. Uh, it looks kind of funny in an eight by 10, so I'm actually gonna crop the drawing down a little bit and I blew it up a little bit for the painting. It helped me get the scaling right in addition to giving me a little bit of practice before coming into the actual painting. So when I'm doing these, I'm actually doing the, uh, the drawings in the same techniques that I'm gonna be using for the underpainting. I'm doing, I'm trying to keep everything as close to the way that I would be doing it with the painting uh, so that it's a direct translation into the painting process. So for the actual painting process here, I use a complementary underpainting. So basically I'm taking the, the image of what it's going to look like and then I'm basically going to f use color theory to flip that in my head. For for skin tone, since it's going to be a little bit more orange-yellow, um, I know it's a lot of different colors, but, you know, simplifying here. Uh, if you're thinking kind of oranges and yellows, then I'm going to be using mostly blue for my underpainting. And then when I shift uh, to, like, clothing and stuff, since he's going to have a blue shirt, I'm going to be using browns, oranges, stuff like that. Uh, to complement that. So the reason I use complementary underpainting is because if you think back to like elementary school color theory, if you have complements next to each other, it's going to make those colors kind of vibrate in your eye. And 
that's also going to give a complexity to the color that you just can't get in direct painting. So uh, if you think of it in terms of like the skin tone, you have so many layers of color going through your skin that you have all of the reds from blood and stuff. Uh, you even have blues in there because of blood uh, that's been oxygenated. Uh, you also have all of the individual uh, skin pigment from all the melanin. There's just a lot of different colors that are going on. And if we build up that color on the painting like it actually is in real life, it's going to be a lot more realistic skin tone and it's going to give that illusion of life a lot better than if it's directly painted. So I'm going to work just a little bit on the skin tone. Uh, and for brushes, I'm using Princeton Select brushes. Uh, I really like these. Uh, they're a synthetic bristle. Uh, they come in a lot of really good sizes and I've just found that they work best for uh, what I do. Uh, for paint, I'm using um, a mixture of Gamblin, Michael Harding, and Vasari. Uh, the Gamblin is their radiant blue. Uh, their radiant colors are great. I, I actually really love these. Um, the Vasari's are their uh, King's Blue and their uh, Video Blue Extra Pale. And the Michael Harding is just an ultramarine. I might also use a little bit of black too, uh, in which that would be uh, either the Michael Harding lamp black or the Gamblin chromatic black. And the medium I'll be using is Walnut Alkid. All right, so as I get started into the actual painting process, a couple things to note um, are that this is basically gonna be a value painting. Um, it's basically just working out the form um, and getting in some of the initial color that will be glazed over. And uh, the, the entire time you're going to notice that I'm going to be painting and following the curves of the form. Um, basically so that I am creating that illusion of 3D space in the painting. So the whole time... I'm going to be thinking about how does how does the the brush strokes affect the form of the figure and trying to create that illusion as I paint. So it's going to be basically the same as uh, my approach for drawing and really just following the curves of the face, following the curves of the clothing and just adding in the value where I need to, to be able to push it back in space or to bring it forward. I do actually a lot of the mixing on the actual painting itself. Um, I find that I have enough uh, different colors that I tend to just use them pretty much straight out of the tube. I don't do a whole lot of mixing. Um, I have a bunch of transparents that I use for um, for glazing and I have a lot of different ones that I use of various, uh, various values that I'm able to kind of just pull them straight out of the tube and uh, get them to work together and mix together on the actual painting uh, in a more natural way rather than mixing up a whole section of like one specific skin tone. Um, I try to work with the natural color breakup in the skin and try to create that on the actual painting itself. So the colors that I'm using right now are basically just straight out of the tube, uh, Gamblin Radiant Blue and Vasari King's Blue. And you'll notice that I just go back over where they kind of meet up and get them to blend naturally that way. Uh, for a lot of the underpainting, I'm going to leave some of the, some of the brush strokes that happen uh, as I'm painting just for some uh, natural skin uh, 
skin texture. So that's basically all, all the rest of it I'm going to I'm going to video today. Um like I said, you can check up on on additional updates on my Instagram page to see how the rest of it goes. Um uh, basically that's going to be the process through the rest of it. It's just mainly creating that value painting so that then I can come back into it with uh with all the color and really building it up layer by layer. Um, really following that form and then ultimately adding those details in. Um, I'm going to end up working on this underpainting for probably about the next week um, because it, I, I find this to be a really important stage of the painting process that ultimately it, it, it's like building a house, that this is going to be the foundation for the rest of the painting. <clears throat> so the more that I get this right, the better the rest of the painting is going to be. So 
um, I'm gonna end up continuing on and doing all of the clothing and the background and all that stuff. But I'm also gonna come back into the into the skin and into the clothing multiple times throughout this process. That ultimately I'll even come back in and even do uh, some little like glaze layers just in in this underpainting process where I'm gonna come in with some of like that gambling chromatic black that I was talking about earlier and even using that to come in and shift some value ever so slightly with glazes or just to uh, you know uh, desaturate an area where I want it to go a little bit grayer already um, but that's that's basically it uh, I'll, I'll go through and even do like some of the hair detail and stuff, but, um, I'll give updates throughout on face on Instagram, like I said. And so check that out. Uh, I'll come back in once, uh, you know, I'll, I'll do more videos once I get into the actual glazing process, uh, show you what the, the final piece looks like before I get started um, or at least the final underpainting rather before I get started in on the glazing and so that will be the next part in this um, So there might be a couple of weeks where we kind of diverge from this project and talk about other things uh, Maybe I'll even show you a little bit more of uh, my, my my painting studio here and kind of ex showing uh, Showing some of the things that I use and some of the materials that I use for the painting process so uh, if you have any questions, if I, if I didn't answer anything um, well enough in the video and you have any questions about the process, leave a comment below and I'll, I'll make sure to get back to you. Uh, please check me out on Instagram, follow the process on there and uh, follow me at, at Matthew Cook Art. Uh, if you like this video, you know, subscribe to the channel and give this the old thumbs up. Uh, but until next time, I'm Matt Cook. See ya.